Hey everybody. Here is a Sparkle Power, also known as an FSP, pretty much the same company. Power supply. Now, this power supply is special in its very own way. It is massive. I refer to this very unit in another video as the 400 watt monster. This thing is extremely heavy. The casing is very thick and tough. I mean, this thing probably weighs at least probably, um, I would guess about five pounds, four or five pounds, I don't know. Just rough guesstimate. Have a look in the back of it. Have a look at the size of that transformer. Let's go ahead and look at the specs. Okay, the model on this thing is a FSP 400-60GN. And it tells you the inputs, that sort of stuff. Does not have PFC. This is a fairly old unit. Max output power 400 watts. So that's probably a peak output, but I'm sure by the way the guts inside this thing are, it could probably sustain that. Here's the outputs on DC. 3.3 volt, 28 amps. 5 volt standby, 2 amps. 5 volt rail, 40 amps. Minus 5 volt rail, 0.3 amps. Like I was saying, this is an older unit. 12 volt rail, 16 amps. Notice the 12 volt rail is a little bit low when you compare it to a unit today. But of course, back in the day when this thing was manufactured, most of the power was over here. And the minus 12 volt rail on this thing is 0 0.8 amps. So let's go ahead and crack this thing up and have a look inside. Okay, I got the screws off. Now, if you might be able to notice, it says it has a ball bearing fan. And of course, by the bulk of this thing, how heavy it is and how well designed the casing is, you would think this power supply was designed to never die. And of course, have a look inside here at all the components in this thing. It is slam full. Have a look at this, folks. This thing is slam full. Yeah, let me go grab my flashlight, wherever it is. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, here it is. Let's have a look at this. This is unreal. Those, t those TPO capacitors are absolutely huge. Can't quite see what their readings are, but um, let me see. I think I see um a 16 volt capacitor that's rated for 3,000 microfarads. That's a lot. That's really good. Let's turn this thing around so you can see um other parts inside here. I mean, this thing is so slam full. Let's see. The primaries, the primary caps in this thing are a thousand microfarads a piece. Now, of course, bundled together in a doubler circuit, you get um, 500 microfarads out of these. If I'm not mistaken, that's how these um, setup, setups work. That's why I love newer power supplies only have like a single 330 or 400 something microfarad capacitor in an active PFC setup. You can look down inside there. And I mean, this thing is just absolutely slammed full of components. The capacitors are huge. The heat sinks are ginormous. It's got a basic fan on it. Well, this average fan is ball bearing fan. 
there is the X capacitor with a resistor between the um, AC leads. If you can see that. I mean, this thing is absolutely crammed. Now, you remember I was just saying something earlier about how well this thing is built. It was built to never die, but you're going to be surprised to hear this. The reason why I had this thing was because I had to replace it. Yes, it was in a e-machines computer. Of course, somebody had replaced the junk bass tech unit after I fried the motherboard with this power supply and another basic socket 478 motherboard. The motherboard only had, um, I think, what, 768 megabytes of RAM. No graphics card. Had a Celeron processor. This power supply had the easy life. I mean, it wasn't being stressed at all. As big as this thing is, even with the 16 amp 12 volt rail, that e machine did not require but maybe probably 10 amps out of the 12 volt rail tops. And this power supply is dead. Yes, folks, it is dead. When you turn it on, well, yeah, when you give it AC power and you multimeter the 5 volt standby rail, you get 0.3 volts out of it. And of course, at that voltage, you can't turn on anything else in the unit. So I'm wondering if uh, maybe there are some bad TPO capacitors in there. And it'll probably be down in this area somewhere. Of course, being the area would be very difficult to get to. Murphy's Law. I'm assuming the 5 volt standby circuitry is down in this area somewhere. And with the big heat sink in the way and those big capacitors, it's going to be really tricky to get at. Trying to get a real good look inside this thing. I don't see any burn marks or anything in this thing. Not at all. Now, of course, I'd hate to toss out a unit that could um, possibly be repaired so easy. Now, of course, I wouldn't throw this thing in the trash can. I would part it out. But I hate to part out such a nice power supply when... Um, it could be something as simple as capacitors. So anyways, the symptoms with this unit are um, the computer will do nothing because it's only getting 0 0.3 volts out of the 5 volt standby rail. This power supply has all sorts of um, potentiometers on it where you can adjust, adjust these things. I think they're like variable resistors. I'm not sure how all that works, but anyway, you can adjust these knobs and actually adjust the output voltages on this thing. This is unreal. So this is the second FSP unit that has mysteriously failed on me. Well, in this case, brought into me as a failed unit. This one here coming, like I said, coming to e-machines, and the other one coming in that um, Acer machine that I bought at the computer work store for real cheap. I mean, it's very unusual. Of course, the first one had a good file standby voltage, but did nothing else. This one here. Seems I have an almost completely dead 5 volt standby rail. Now I'm sure somebody who's really experienced with power supplies might have the answer to this mysterious, mysterious unit as to why it is not working. Now the reason why I didn't include video of me hooking up a multimeter to this thing is because I didn't want to apply power to this thing and then open it up after applying power to it. Because, of course, those big old capacitors, it'll take this thing a long time to fully discharge. I don't see any bulging capacitors in this thing. And these capacitors are dated, um, I believe 2004. So this power supply was manufactured in 2004. Because the date code on these things is, um, January 04, I believe. Or it could be, um, it could be year 2001, April. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, Power Supply does have a pretty good amount of use on it. There's a pretty good bit of dust, especially in the back of it. Now, there's no telling how many times this has probably been cleaned out. And judging by the Transformers, there is a little bit of, um, you can tell that they got a little bit of age on from in terms of heat wise you can see the discoloration on them 
in the last um, FSP unit I looked at had none of that. This is just normal wear and tear on a power supply. It's very unusual, I, I tell you. Normally when I get power supplies, <clears throat> such as those best techs that come in the compacts and HPs or um, that Hypro Dell unit that had a bad TPO capacitor. Though those units are I mean kinda simple. I mean you just change out the capacitors and they come right back to life. But this one here and the other FSP power supply don't really know where to go from. Don't really know where to start start from because I don't see no visual damage in either of these units. So somebody who's experienced with power supplies tell me what you think might be the problem. And of course, if you haven't seen my previous video on the other FSP unit, it's on Q Computer Channel, so have, go have a look at it too. I mean, it's another mysteriously dead FSP power supply.